Hi, my name's Chris Abraham, and this is Season 2, Episode 21 of Chris Cast. This episode is going to be about why chrisabraham.com looks the way it does. Old-fashioned and jiggity-jiggity-jiggity. So I'll tell you all about it right after the message. Welcome back to Chris Cast. This is Chris Abraham. That's me. Episode 21, season 2 of Chris Cast. If any of you, at the end of every episode, I spend 20 minutes telling you how to contact me, including I've even add, added uh, Calendly. And if you want to, you can donate money to me and you can uh, send me voice messages at anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham, uh, I think slash support or slash and slash voicemail. I don't know. Communicate slash communicate. But one of the things I always talk about is reaching me at abraham.su or chrisabraham.com. And you get there and it looks like you've been, uh, sent back via time travel to uh, 2001, 2002, maybe 2005, but certainly not 2020 because I am running my favorite content management system, my favorite portal of my entire life, which is a Python-based, Zoke-based, Plone based open source tool called Plone. And I believe it is Plone latest Plone and the latest Plone I believe is 4.3. And I believe that maybe it's 4.3. So, with all excitement, I installed it. And I've been spending the last few years uh, filling it with all the content from all the corners of current and past interwebs. In fact, I've been hiring my uh, Garris Corp Indian team for my personal use to go ahead and transfer all the content from rnr.us and then ultimately all the content from uh old like stuff you have to use the wayback machine for uh such as marketing communication um marketing communication what's that was called dot com and adage.com and and uh um uh, all the different things, all the way going back to uh, 1993, or as far as the Wayback Machine goes. For those of you who don't know what the Wayback Machine is, it's on, I believe, archive.org, or just go to Google and type the Wayback Machine. It gives you the ability to mostly go back in history to different points in time when a cache, not a cache, a cache or a copy of each particular website, a snapshot, if you will, is taken. So there are thousands of Chris Abraham content out there. And uh, I want to bring it all home. And because chrisabraham.com is for me and not for you, I want to use an interface that I'm not only familiar with, but like the look of. And so I've chosen that particular default 
template that comes installed in version 2 of Plone, which is an open source content management site. Um, enterprise level, like meant for much more than a personal site like Drupal is. Um, and I just wasn't happy with what I would be getting with WordPress or Drupal or um, Joomla or any of those things. And so I decided to install that and lightly, um, lightly design it. But to be honest, all the, everything's default. And what I like about it is that everything is object oriented. Everything is contained in what's called a ZOAP object database. And because the, the uh, platform is open source and so over-designed so as to be uh, viable for a publication or a, uh, a world-recognized nonprofit, it has amazing caching, uh, caching tools built in, in addition to the Cloudflare that I built, uh, that I run it through as well. So it is very durable, uh, unlike a lot of WordPress sites that tend to boggle down and bog down when you hit them with any level of traffic. So I don't, I feel comfortable being slash dotted or sharing on to Reddit or, or being very promiscuous with where I share my content. And so another reason I like it is that it has objects and it has discrete objects. Um, while WordPress has pages and posts, uh, this has um, events, it has pages, it has wiki items, it has news items, which are bloggy, blog type of posts. And uh, there are other kinds of items that are in there. It's also multi-user. I can add other people. I can add admin administrators. I could, if I wanted to, um, convert this into a community and install um, plugins and modules that would extend the usability. I would potentially be able to allow other people to blog, event, and page here. Uh, it's very simple and easy. And another thing I really like is as I go in as an admin and not as Chris, I can easily post other people's content without having to create other accounts for them and just type their name in what who the contributor was. So it allows me to go ahead and allow uh, without, I mean, you can do this anyway, but generally when I'm using a WordPress blog, I create a new user account and then post as them. But it's much easier to take other people's content, uh, a guest post or whatever, and just put it in there as admin and then attribute it to them. So that's much easier. It also has a, a lovely tabbing system at the top. I can add a lot of tabs and they look like tabs, not just, if you will, um, um, uh, you know, navigation links. Uh, it has a very familiar look and feel. There's a left column called a portlet. There's a right column called a portlet. Portlets can um, and do change according to their context. So all of the portlets associated with the, the blog tab can be different than the portlet that's associated with the uh, main uh, index page, the main uh, chrisabraham.com page. Um, the downsides. The downsides is I needed to find a special host. Uh, in this case, A2, and it's not a managed host. I just have an empty box, uh, an empty virtual machine, an empty, I believe, FreeBSD box. And so um, if something goes wrong, I can't ask A2 hosting to help me out. They can help me diagnose this, and that's only through the kindness of their hearts. But other than that, I got to get, I got to bring the car into the garage and either hide, hire a mechanic, and I found a great one on Fiverr, or uh, put on my overalls and get oily and greasy and dirty on my own. Uh, thank you, Scott uh, Burns, for helping me um, 
you always help me, but luckily I have Dita, Dita from Fiverr, who can help me when I need it. Periodically, I reach out to him and he will uh, do um, security updates for me and other things like that. And I overpay him for those things because uh, I want this to work right. Because the last thing I need is a corruption of the Zope object database or some other gaffe like that. Do I plan to upgrade uh, Plone to version 5 or version 6? Yes, but only when I can find someone who can make me an exact replica of the current chrisabraham.com website and then also offer me um, um, mobile native options. I want it to be, uh, right now it's not mobile native at all. You basically go in there and if you don't have some sort of version of simplified view that your browser offers you or your phone offers you, then your SOL. Um, what else? Easy interface, quick, fast, extremely good caching, objects I can understand, uh, excellent events tools, beautiful uh, Dublin Core integration, extremely beautiful Google hooks that Google trusts. Google assumes that spammers and SEO mavens do not go to the trouble of installing Plone. So because Plone is generally associated with nonprofits and do-gooders and Python coders and uh, Zope coders, and because Google hearts Python, I have a feeling that there's certain installations of certain softwares that uh, Google gives a little bit of uh, extra love to. Um, and that is not... Uh, not WordPress, because WordPress is easy to um, abuse. And uh, aside from that, oh, it's also my, all my content. It's not owned by Squarespace. It's not hosted on Squarespace. It's not hosted on TypePad. It's not hosted on Blogger. And it's all, it's all my own content in my own space. And my goal for it is to be my everything site, right? So for the next five years, I aspire to have my Indian team go out everywhere um, I've ever been. TMN.com slash Tilda Chris, uh, you know, well.com slash Tilda CJA, um, onto uh, uh, newmediastrategies.net, I believe. Uh, marketingconversation.com, uh, abrahamharrison.com, ahllc.com, uh, biznology.com, adage.com. Um, oh, I did a bunch of, I did a bunch, I did a bunch of posts for Rosetta Stone blog. Uh, everything and anything that I can find that is relevant. And, oh, just, I mean, this is really easy to do on WordPress and every place else. But the thing I'm doing is every time I post one of these old blog posts, I, I have my team or me, I post them the date that they were originally posted. So even though that doesn't give me new content, it definitely creates a broader and bigger and deeper and richer resource of everything Chris Abraham. And even though I don't, consider that to be anything worthwhile for anybody. It is, uh, if you will, the closest thing to a box of memories that I have. Um, as many of my bad poems are on there, uh, as many of my everything is on there. And it's, and I need to get more photos up there. They're stuck in, in Facebook and so forth. And, and, uh, and they're all over uh, Flickr. And all those things are going to go away. So I need to stuff, 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 stuff more and more of my life into that space. And I am highly impressed by Plone. I always have. And here's a, a, a vision into my backstory. Uh, I discovered Zope uh, in 1998, 1999 from Scott Burns. And, and just got really excited about it to the point where I was hired by a dude in Berlin to create the company called 
uh, Beehive NA, which is part of Beehive Beehive GmbH out of Berlin. And so I I sold um, I sold Zope. Um, I learned Python, and when years later, hey Google, when did Plone the CMS start? 1999. According to Wikipedia, the Plone project began in 1999 by Alexander Limmy, Alan Runyon, and Vidar Anderson. It was made as a usability layer on top of the Zope content management framework. The first version was released in 2001. The project quickly grew into a community receiving plenty of new add-on products from its users. And that's not Zope, it's Zope. It's not Plone, it's Plone. It's not Python, A, it's Python. And though Python is an object-oriented um, scripting language. Anyway, uh, as opposed to a language that must be compiled and executed. Um, its cousins, while not um, necessarily, while not object-oriented, are things like uh, PH, sorry, Perl, um, etc. So it's completely different though, and it's very popular right now. And I would, it would take me an entire year to get all the rust off of my Python skills. And, um, uh, let me know what you think. Are you, have you ever used Plone? Have you ever used Zope? Do you ever use Python? Um, I was really deep in Zope. I was, I would go down to visit the, uh, Zope offices down in, uh, um, oh, hey, Google, where were the offices of Zope? Sorry, I don't know. Hey, Google, with that. where are the offices of Zope? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Hey, there Google, can... where are the offices of Zope Corporation? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Ugh. Where was Lu where was Luca Donkeek born? Never mind. Oh well uh, I think I knew where that was. I know the place, I just it's not off my tongue. It is Fredericksburg, Virginia, formed in 1995. Uh, oh, man, I go way back. Uh, Zope is a family of free and open source web application servers written in Python and their associated online community. Zope stands for Z Object Publishing Environment and was the first system using the new common object publishing method for the web. Zope has been called a Python killer app, an application that helped put Python in the spotlight. So I think it's awesome. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. I hope you come visit chrisabraham.com. Uh, let me know. I quite enjoy it, and I quite look forward to uh, making it even more awesome. Talk to you soon. <laughs>Episode 21, Season 2 of Chris Cast. Now fortified with Python, Zope, and Plone. You can reach me, like I said, at chrisabraham.com, a Plone site. And you're not Plone. <laughs> and uh, you can reach me at chris at abraham.su. You can reach me at chris at garriscorp.com. 
uh, as an aside, Garrus Corp is on Squarespace. I don't know why that happened. Uh, you can reach me at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. If you want to schedule a call with me, you can at calendly.com slash Chris Abraham. Um, you can text me or WhatsApp me at plus one, two Oh two, three, five, two, five, zero, five, one. You can Skype me at Chris Abraham. You can call me at plus one, two Oh two, three, five, two, five, zero, five, one. However, I never answer calls that I don't recognize. So you will go to, uh, Google voice in- inscription and be emailed to me and then I'll get back to you. Uh, nothing personal. Um, what else? What else? I think that might be it. Oh, linkedin.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. And of course, anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham slash support. If you want to subscribe to this podcast for a cheap four ninety five a month, that would be much obliged. I don't know if anybody's done it. I don't think so. And if you want to leave a voice message, you can go to anchor.com slash anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham and follow the buttons and do that recording. And I'd be happy to play it and answer it and all that other fun stuff. I want to explore all the cool tools that anchor.fm has. Thank you. Mahalo Nui Loa. Aloha. Mahalo. Ciao. <laughs> Ha! <laughs>